So red-eyed tree frogs are undoubtedly the most recognizable frog in the world. It definitely is the most photographed frog in the world. Even people who aren't into reptiles and amphibians can identify a red-eyed tree frog. And here in Costa Rica, that frog is an icon. Every gift shop all over the country has paintings and coffee cups and other souvenirs featuring the red-eyed tree frog. And right now, keeping red-eyed tree frogs is a hobby that's growing all the time. So how are red-eyed tree frogs living in the wild out here in Costa Rica? Well, in this video, I'm going to visit varied habitats and look into how the red-eyed tree frog is living in the wild out here in Costa Rica so that we better know how to care for them in our homes. I'm Dave Kaufman, and these are my reptile adventures. Rainbow Mealworms is not only a proud sponsor of this channel, they are the premier source for all your reptile food needs. They grow all of their quality insects in-house and I use them exclusively for all my insect eating reptiles. So place your order today at rainbowmealworms.net or click the link in the description below. A lot of people think that the red-eyed tree frog is native only to Costa Rica simply because a lot of the merchandise and souvenirs that come from Costa Rica feature the red-eyed tree frog, but they actually range from Mexico all all the way down into South Panama. But here in Costa Rica, it's found throughout almost the entire country, from the Caribbean side to here in the southwest corner of the country on the Pacific side. The only place in Costa Rica that it does not exist is up in the central mountain range. So here in Costa Rica, there is geographic variations depending on where the frog lives. They look different on the Caribbean side than they do here on the Pacific side, and I'll get to that a little later on in the video. All right, so look at this perfect habitat for red-eyed tree frogs. This is obviously a man-made pond, but you have the perfect scenario for red-eyed tree frogs. It's right on the edge of the forest, and this is the perfect scenario for these red-eyed tree frogs to breed in this pond here. Have a look at this. I have never seen anything like this before. So I was looking around on all these plants that are overhanging these ponds, and these plants are full of egg masses and sleeping red-eyed tree frogs. This is incredible. And you can plainly see the embryos within these egg sacs, and some are more developed than others. So the scientific name of these frogs is Agalichnus calidrus, which comes from the Greek words for kalos and dryas, meaning beautiful wood nymph. That is a perfect name for this frog. So let's talk about those red eyes and why they have them. They don't actually have eyelids, as you can see from this sleeping frog, but they have a nictitating membrane. It's basically a translucent eyelid that allows light to enter the eye so that they will wake up if they sense a predator. So when a predator comes along, they will abruptly open their eyes and stare directly at the predator. And that sudden appearance of the red eyes may startle the predator for just a second, giving the frog enough time to make an escape. I have just stumbled upon a red-eyed tree frog nursery. And look at how they're utilizing the underside of these plants to lay their egg masses. And that gives protection to the egg mass from any predators that can see it from above. And each one of these sleeping red-eyed tree frogs is sleeping on the underside of the leaf as well to protect themselves from overhead predators. But not only that, but sleeping on the edge of the leaves, they're gonna feel any predator that crawls up the stalk of this plant and onto the leaf long before that predator reaches the frog. And if you notice how they sleep, they tuck their back legs against their sides to hide that coloration so that they completely disappear against the green background. All right, so now that I know that these frogs are here and this is in fact a red-eyed tree frog nursery, I'm gonna come back to this spot at night and we're gonna see a completely different behavior in these frogs after dark tonight. So as far as surface temperature is concerned, I'm not gonna take a temperature reading on the ground because the frogs aren't on the ground. They are up here on these leaves of these plants, but they're not on the surface during the daytime. They're underneath the plant. So I'm going to take a temperature read here and it's 74 degrees where they would be sleeping during the day. Over on that one, also 74, also 74. It's not surprising that there is no fluctuation to the temperature from leaf to leaf. The temperature stays pretty constant all around here in Costa Rica. 
So what this is telling us is that the optimal temperature for daytime sleeping areas in your enclosure should be at 74 degrees on the surface, but ambient temperature is just as important as well as humidity. So we'll take an ambient temperature reading and a humidity right here on these leaves. And we've got 77.8% relative humidity, 28 degrees Celsius which is 82 and a half degrees Fahrenheit ambient temperature. So for the well-being of your red-eyed tree frogs or any frogs that come from this area of Costa Rica, I would set the ambient temperature during the day in your enclosures to the lower 80s. And again, that humidity is so important and often overlooked when keeping these frogs. So again, upper 70s to even the lower 80s, humidity within your enclosure is optimal for red-eyed tree frogs. So let's talk a little bit about UV light and if it's beneficial to nocturnal animals like red-eyed tree frogs. For frogs like dart frogs who are completely diurnal, yes it is a must. But is it a must for nocturnal frogs like red-eyed tree frogs? Well, red-eyed tree frogs come out maybe about an hour before sunset and they go down to sleep about an hour after sunset in the morning. It's called crepuscular. And there are commercially available UV lights available for crepuscular reptiles and amphibians. So when it comes to UV lighting for your red-eyed tree frog, I would very strongly suggest looking into those crepuscular UV lights and include one of those in the enclosure. So when it comes to enclosure design for red-eyed tree frogs, you should really think about it in two parts. One is to have a standing reservoir of water and the water should be kept as clean as possible so be sure to get a good filtration system for the water in your enclosure and the other half should be the soil where you plant your plants and your plant selection should be plants that are big broad leafed that overhang over the water to really mimic the natural environment here in Costa Rica so when you go to any nursery and you buy tropical plants this is where those tropical plants are native to. So I'm gonna show you guys some of the plants that are native to here in Costa Rica in the red-eyed tree frog's habitat so that you guys can get some ideas on your plant selection for your enclosures at home. Here we have a Calamus formosanus, and this is in the palm family. It's got these big, wide leaves that your frog can perch on. This is a really common plant here in the rainforest. However, it gets really big. And this is another broad-leafed plant this is in the Arum family, and frogs love to sit on these, and they love to sleep underneath them. And of course, you can never go wrong with a philodendron. These are heart-shaped philodendron, and it would be a really good idea to have a philodendron like this in the corners of your enclosure to kind of fill in that space. These will creep and cling right to the sides of your enclosures. This is a cool plant. This is in the genus Diphenbachia. And this one also has those big broad leaves that your frog can sun himself or sleep under. That's a cool plant to have in your vivarium. And this is another awesome rainforest plant. I just love the way that the veins look in this plant. This is a soap bush plant. If you can get your hands on a soap bush plant, that is going to be a really cool plant to have in your terrariums. And this is a creeping plant that's really colorful and really cool. It's called an inch plant and that grows native here as well. So out of all the ginger species that occur here in Costa Rica, this one I love. It doesn't get too big, it's really ornamental, but this is a spiral ginger, and it gets its name because the stalk grows in a spiral. This would be a really cool plant to have in your red-eyed tree frog enclosure. There's also a lot of very colorful ornamental plants that exist here, like this expanded lobster claw. They're related to birds of paradise plants, but they're a little bit different. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Hey there, little dude. So as I'm filming this plant, this spiny-tailed iguana is gonna, well, make a cameo in our red-eyed tree frog video. Maybe I should do a spiny-tailed in the wild video pretty soon. So I bet you guys didn't know that I know every single plant species here in the rainforest of Costa Rica. My knowledge of the local flora here in Costa Rica amazes even me. Each individual plant, flower, I know exactly what it is. I bet you guys didn't know that. All right, I've got an app for that. I wouldn't know what the heck I'm looking at without it.
All right guys, so we are back at the Red-Eyed Tree Frog Nursery that we saw earlier today. And man, this place is alive with red-eyed tree frogs. There is breeding behavior here. There are egg masses about to drop. I am surrounded by maybe 50 red-eyed tree frogs right now in this nursery. All right, so have a look at this individual red-eyed tree frog here. He is sitting so nice right on my fingers, but this is a good time for me to talk about that every time we call this the red-eyed tree frog, it's actually not its true name. The true name of these frogs is actually red-eyed leaf frog, not red-eyed tree frogs. So what's the difference between a tree frog and a leaf frog? Well, there's a few differences actually. If you've got a big body and long spindly legs, chances are you're a leaf frog. If you walk more than you hop, you're a leaf frog. And that's what these guys do. They walk more than they hop and they have large bodies and skinny legs. So again, every time we call this a red-eyed tree frog, it's actually not its true name. It's actually a red-eyed leaf frog. I can't ever really see people starting to call this the red-eyed leaf frog. So at least for now, red-eyed tree frog is gonna stick. So guys, leave a comment below and let me know if you know some of the other differences between tree frogs and leaf frogs. All right, so there's a male on top of the leaf right there. So that's where I'm gonna zap my temperature probe. And it's 76 degrees right where that frog is sitting, which is 24 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to take an ambient temperature reading and a humidity reading right where these guys are in amplexus here. I have my probe close to where they are in amplexus. And look at that, 91% humidity and 25 degrees Celsius which is 77 degrees ambient. So that is extremely high humidity here at night. And the ambient temperature is only a few degrees warmer than the surface temperature. So what this tells us is to increase the humidity in your enclosures at night, but the temperatures pretty much remain constant in the daytime and here at night. So keep your enclosures in the upper 70s humidity really high 90 percent at night and then drop that humidity down into the lower 80s in your enclosures during the day and there's another egg mass just ready to drop but on this one leaf look at this one egg mass two egg mass three egg mass four five in there and then you've got these two making more Red-eyed tree frogs' embryos exhibit something called phenotypic plasticity. It's where they hatch early in response to a disturbance to protect themselves. So if a predator comes near those egg masses, the tadpoles will hatch early and drop into the water. So in this frog nursery, there's a predator just up on the trees here. That's a northern cat-eyed snake that's here to predate the egg masses. And look at this, there's a fresh nest right on the leaf right by this northern cat-eyed snake. It's a pretty good chance that those eggs aren't gonna last the night with him sitting up there. They normally hatch after about six to 10 days. However, if they fall off these leaves into the water and miss and hit the land, they can survive for up to 20 hours on land before they have to get into the water, otherwise they're going to perish. So guys, earlier I mentioned that there is geographic variation with these frogs here in Costa Rica. On the Caribbean side, you have the really deep, vibrant blue sides. And here on the Pacific side in the southwest part of the country, you have ones that look like this, where those blues and yellows are replaced with browns and oranges on the side. For me, I kind of like the browns and the yellows, and I also really like the blues and yellows, again, found on the Caribbean side. So comment below and let me know what your favorite color variant of the red-eyed tree frog is. Do you like the Caribbean blues, or do you like the Pacific browns and oranges? Comment below and let me know.
But right now in our hobby, there are a lot of really cool morphs that are being bred in captivity of the red-eyed tree frog. And one of the top breeders of red-eyed tree frogs is Mike Novi in Cleveland. So we're gonna leave Costa Rica for a second and head up to Cleveland, Ohio to meet with Mike and see some of the really cool red-eyed tree frog morphs and to learn a little bit about their captive breeding. So we're in Cleveland, Ohio with Mike Novi. You are one of the pioneers of red-eyed tree frogs there. We have an albino morph right there. So you've set up this rain chamber here, and this is really key to breeding red eyes. Talk a little bit about the rain chamber and how you set one of these up. Okay, well, I mean, for mostly, it's mostly water on the bottom. Hydroponically grow the plants uh, in gravel. So when we go and do the rain cycle, we actually watch the weather channel a lot. So when you see the fronts coming through, like today, you know, it started raining. We started raining on them last night. And of course, all the females started swelling up a little bit more. So all your frogs are basically stimulated by barometric pressure. So when we do put this on, we only put it on for like four to five hours a day. And if they don't lay eggs within three days, we pull them out, feed them up, and then we'll put them in a week later. Because if you keep them in there too long, they can either do one of two things, get a bacterial infection and prolapse, or, they can get start getting eye infections. So, but we do also change the water every day we do the rain. Complete water change. Every day? Every day. And we also have it on a filter system. So this way it keeps them clean, try to keep everybody from having any kind of problems whatsoever because medicating amphibians just sucks. All right, so one of the really cool things about selective breeding is all the morphs that we can come up with. So how many morphs of red-eyed tree frogs exist currently? Eight. Eight. This right here is a bubblegum red eye. And as you can see on the side with the translucent skin, you can see the eggs forming. Oh, look at that. And she is a heifer. So that's the bubblegum morph. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, that's a typical burgundy, yep. Yeah, a typical burgundy. And that one is like a granite burgundy. Something new, so we're gonna see what it does. See, so even the burgundy gets a little bit of blotching. You kind of see a little bit of discoloration, mm -hmm. like the pink does. So we're thinking that the purple is where the actual blotching comes from. Yeah, and this is a hangover. Now this is a relatively new morph, isn't it? Correct, it just pops out once in a while. It's a normal, but it actually has like the white eye like a Latino does. Right, so that's essentially a normal with white eyes. Mm-hmm, but it looks like it has a hangover. Yeah, and that is just a normal albino. Mm-hmm. All right, so that one is a T-positive Latino. And that one up there is a T-positive albino. With a little bit lighter eyes than a typical T-positive albino goes with, but it has more of that crackle effect to the Yeah, eye. yeah. So, which is actually being passed on to the highlighters. And these two are highlighters. Yeah, the legs really stick out on them too, but the, the orangey yellow that they are, with the, if you actually look at their eyes, they have a red, like, contrast, but then they have, like, this white crack length on the pupil out. Right. There is a blue one, it's very, very rare. It's a wild caught, but it has blue splashing on it. Yeah, so this is a brand new morph of red eye. It's, yeah, I mean, this is something that I'm looking forward to, to adding to the pink morph. We're hoping that we can actually make a T positive, which if that's piebalism, that would be like an, oh, some kind of like- I was just gonna ask if that's some sort of, yeah, piebalism. I mean, I don't know, I don't know. We don't know what this is exactly, but we're gonna find out. So we are essentially looking at a brand new morph of red-eyed tree frog here. Potentially, yeah. So that gives you a little idea of how Mike works with and breeds red-eyed tree frogs here in Cleveland, Ohio. But for now, let's head back down to Costa Rica. All right, guys, so it's morning time. All the red-eyed tree frogs that were up and active all night long are finding their places underneath these huge leaves to sleep all day. So anyway, guys, I hope that this video gave you some insight into how to care for these really amazing frogs. And as always with the In the Wild series, leave a comment below with a tip or technique on how you guys are keeping red-eyed tree frogs so that others can learn from you as as well and guys this concludes my adventures here in Costa Rica but from here I'm heading out on another awesome reptile adventure down in Puerto Rico so keep an eye out for those videos coming next and guys as always thanks for watching and until the next reptile adventure from Puerto Rico love the planet feed your reptile obsession and rattle on